Hey guys, Mike here. So another volatile day in the market and I got a jam packed video for you guys with plenty of information and data that came out today as well as we go to the charts. But let me just start off with this. What happened overnight last night? Another rating agency comes out and says, the regional banks, they might be in a little bit of trouble. As you can see here, five banks cut by the S&P rating agency because they might be in a little bit of distress. And what did I tell you guys two weeks ago? I'm not saying, I mean, obviously, allegedly, you know, maybe somebody's slipping them some dollars to start downgrading, but do your job. You're supposed to be there before the mess hits, or at least right after. You guys are waiting months. And if we got, and don't be spreading where I tell you this, we still got one more rating agency that I don't think we've heard from, have we? So one is downgraded banks, right? And one downgraded the U.S. debt. So those other things can get downgraded. So I think the other one, you know, so, so let's see what happens if we start to finally get a bounce off some certain levels, right? And let's see if that rating agency comes out and tries to push us down even farther. And what do you know? Get a little bit of a bounce and, uh-oh, wait a minute. Send it, Jimmy. Boom. Hit them with it. And there's your third rating agency coming out with a downgrade again. I don't disagree with any of the downgrades of what they're saying. I'm just saying they are way late and it's the timing is super, super suspicious. And what do I mean by that? Understand about these regional banks. Who holds most of the commercial property loans? Who holds most of the paper? Regional banks, about between 80 and 90%. Okay. Who really wants to buy regional banks? The big banks, right? Like JP Morgan, who was not supposed to be able to buy the bank they just bought this year, but they got special permission to buy it. And you heard Jamie Dimon just glowing talking about how much money was gonna be put to the bottom line because when regional banks get distressed, the Fed makes a super sweet deal for these bigger banks to take them over and of course they get even bigger, right? And so also on top of that, who is saving up billions of dollars to buy commercial paper? Well, it's BlackRock, it's Goldman Sachs, okay? Who do you gotta get the commercial paper from? You gotta get it from regional banks. How do you get it from them? you make sure the pressure is on so great to push them down even farther by obviously downgrades and their ratings and stuff that you either, one, literally drive them out of business because they go under and they're forced out to sell, obviously, or two, you put so much pressure on the executives and the board from the stockholders that they just willingly say, we need to sell. Plus it benefits them because who holds all the stock and the company that is the executives and the board, right? The employees hold nothing, so they don't care about them. And so they want to get out while the getting's good. What it, what may it also pressure them to do? To do what PacWest did, to sell their commercial portfolio, right? At a discount, a steep discount. And that's what the report came out last week about BlackRock and them going, we're just holding out. We're going to sit here and save up money to buy these distressed commercial properties, the paper, the loans on them and stuff like that. And it's no different than what they did in 08. Right in my own neighborhood here in Florida, my neighbors tell me all about it. Who are the original who are the original buyers in here? When 08 happened and all the foreclosures foreclosures started just spreading like crazy, bigger companies came in. They bought the whole neighborhood up that was left over. They rented them out. They waited for years till the property values recovered and skyrocketed. And guess what? They made a killing doing it. And you know, when you got something like BlackRock with those ten trillion dollars in assets. They can afford to hold, okay? And they got a plan in place. And so, again, I'm not saying the rating agencies are bought off. I'm saying they're late. And I'm saying it's very suspicious. And again, don't disagree with their stuff, you know? But that's my, just my opinion. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, by the way. Uh, but that's just what I believe. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, we did have some other data that come out. And you can see right here, this is the Philly Fed non-manufacturing data that came out. And you can see, obviously not good. August to went to negative 13, supposed to be plus 1.4. New order sales, work week, and business activity rolled over and are in contraction. Full and part-time employment also fell as well. You can see that by the chart. And then you go over here and you got the Richmond Fed Manufacturing Index at negative seven, was supposed to be negative 10, so not as bad, but new orders and shipments ticked up but remain in contraction wages climb to highest since may capex soften and employment rolled back over into contraction and guys before we continue if you're getting anything out of this please hit that thumbs up down there i really appreciate it and if you like the material here in the videos think about subscribing and again one day the market will actually care about you know manufacturing data i mean i just 
uh, did a video on that and call it new orders and all that stuff and how the business cycle one day will actually mean something. Maybe we're at the bottom, maybe we're not. And you look at it and say, well, the data can't get much worse. Well, we'll see, right? But they, it seems like they're kind of thinking it's going to turn back up because it is literally that bad. Okay. And sometimes that is the case and the market likes to be ahead of that. We'll have to see. Now, one deal here, I got to tell you, this has got to be, <laughs> I think it's the shortest trade on, in history or whatever, as far as shorts piling into this. And it has to do with a two-year treasury. Look at this right here. This goes back to the 80s as far as we tracked it. And this is the two-year U.S. Treasury net non-commercial futures. And you can see, boy, I mean, minus almost 30 down there. Never been this low, but people are just piling in, beating this thing down, shorting the break side of it, right? And I would say that's because the two-year yield has been like skyrocketing and stuff. And so let me know if you're playing that at all or how, how are you playing it. Let me know. There's got to be a way to make out for that because that is a hugely crowded trade. And usually when it's that crowded, you usually see the opposite effect happen, right? Now, emerging markets have been talking about them. They've just been an absolute hot mess. As you can see right here, this is the Bloomberg EM Sovereign Total Return Index, the MSCI Emerging Markets Currency Index, and the MSCI Emerging Markets Index. Whew, that's a mouthful. All down to the negatives. Obviously, August has been horrible for them. And then if you go over this chart, obviously had the worst week since March of this year. This is the MSCI World Index. And you can see, I mean, the last three weeks in general have not been good. And a lot of this has to do with China, the world's second largest economy. Obviously, Everybody's raising rates. They're trying to cut. They're trying to do whatever they can. And in the long run, you know, I did a video on this. Like, they just got a major problem. I don't even know how you solve it. I guess it would be with machinery or something. Uh, but if you look at this right here, for those who don't know it, it'll make you aware of why, for the long term, they just got a hot mess on their hands, it seems like. Doesn't mean their markets aren't going to go up or anything else or be manipulated up. But if you look at this, 23% of China's population will be older than 70 by 2050 right and i mean you just look you can see this right it's china on the left it's the world excluding china on the right and just look at the age brackets over there from like 60 on up versus the rest of the world i mean that and that's what that one child policy did to them and so that's amazing i mean you look at the population obviously lower than that not a lot right the working age population not a lot i don't know how you fix that again i don't live in china some people seem to be experts in it so you know i'll go off what they say but yeah, that's just a hot mess. And that, I mean, obviously that's 2050. We'll, we'll go through many business cycles by then, but I don't know how they fix that for the long term. Okay. And now we switch over to the market and you can see we had more stock upgrades from Webbush here. You got Google at a 160 price target, Amazon 180, Meta at 350. Of course, we had multiple come out this week and stuff, especially on NVIDIA and Tesla. And then we look at the QQQ, for example, I mean, obviously start off red hot and pre-market, but again, that trend line I told you about will be resistance now and it hit it head on, bounced off of, off of it, sold off for the rest of the day. And what'll be interesting to see if this thing actually rallies and breaks through or just grinds up, but will this form a right shoulder? I think obviously tomorrow will uh, say a lot about the market and stuff, but it could just grind up through here and then sell back off starting in September and make that right shoulder into a head and shoulders. We'll have to keep that on watch. And then you look at IWM, you know, what's been holding it up? Again, we talked about the 100 and the 200 meeting right there for three straight days. It's been basically falling along with that. It's still sitting in that volume gap that's been building up uh, for the last year and a half. So this could fall like a rock if it breaks through there. Again, I think obviously NVIDIA earnings, if they tank tomorrow, uh, after hours, we're going to know a lot about the market direction over the next few weeks for sure. But small caps right now are just trying to hold up for dear life and can't really catch much of a bid right now. And they are a lot more sensitive when it comes to the economic data uh, than the other indexes. So uh, we got to be aware of that. Now, what else is hurting it? Obviously, with that downgrade on banks, you see all the regional banks, which the IWM has a lot of selling off like crazy and again as long as that's happening and regional banks are weak it's going to be very hard for the iwm to really catch a big bid and do a real big breakout and stuff okay eventually a bottom might come but let's see where that's at tesla started off huge in pre-market You're like oh man it's going to be another massive massive day and then of course you can see here on a smaller chart uh, once at top right there you see that big gap and it just sold down really fast so did nvidia uh, as well so it's kind of like a big rug pull happened right there at market open caught a lot of people up right there and then of course you know when you look at this it's still in this gap right here is a volume gap so that's why 
it, it can move up fast and it can move down fast. Again, it has a lot of things happen around that 108 to 112, 113 area as far as uh, where a major support is, where a gap fill is, where two trend lines are meeting. And I'm sure I'm forgetting something else. But then you look at NVIDIA, was another one. I mean, it was way up in pre-market and you see it went to all, it, it come out at 930 at all time highs, just a little bit above the previous one. But you can see, you saw the same thing you saw in Tesla. It just sold right off. And after lunch, just traded sideways, right? And when we look at this, we'll have to see if this actually plays out. But when I pull this up, instead of a head and shoulders, I mean, what do you got here? A double top, right? And so if that double top plays out, and a lot of people are talking about this on Twitter today, you know, the target is the same thing as a head and shoulders. It's right there in that gap. And so, you know, will this be a sell the news event where they report great earnings? No problem. And the market says, hey, we ran you up, you know, so much already. We're going to go ahead and sell off so we can get in at a cheaper price. That's all wonderful. Or does it, you know, basically go against gravity and just continue uh, to head higher, right? And so let me know in the comments what you think there. Now, PayPal, this one right here, again, we bounced off that trend line. It got a bit of the day. I always say watch the ones that are green uh, when everything else is kind of selling off. Again, though, I'm looking at this 8 and 21 moving average. When you do get across here, when it starts to curl up, you get some decent runs on this one. Right now, it's attempting to try to curl up, but it has not yet, right? It's still downtrending, so keep that in mind, and it's under a lot of pressure still, and you'll get a lot of basically resistance around that 63-ish type area right there. So keep that in mind on PayPal. And then with earnings tomorrow, again, Peloton, Advanced Auto Parts, you're gonna end up with Foot Locker, some more retailers, and a lot of retailers got destroyed today. Uh, and then, of course, the big daddy, NVIDIA After Hours, you're also gonna have Snowflake, which nobody's talking about, Splunk, Autodesk, and so, because again, it really just, I mean, I guess NVIDIA is really the only one that really matters, just because it's a trillion dollar company now. And now as far as the economic news coming out, you'll have the S&P Global Composite PMI, manufacturing and services data, which could affect markets before they open and stuff. And then you'll have Jackson Hole is going to start. But remember, Jerome Powell speaks on Friday. Okay, so again, they may have other people speaking Wednesday, Thursday, but I don't think the market's going to care until Friday comes along and Jerome speaks. So tomorrow you only got one, one real pressure event, and, and that will be NVIDIA, the AI king supposedly and again they are the only ones with picks and shovels so we'll get to find out a whole lot i can't wait to hear the earnings call uh, and see what happens and how the market's going to react to this because normally seasonality wise i just showed the members you get a pop at the end of august going in september and then you get a drop like the middle end of september uh, after a sell-off like this but you know if they come out and they don't hit earnings well that's that's really neither here nor there and then they can come out and hit them and it's a sell the news event and again it's a, it's a big um you know push into it i was kind of surprised they actually did sell it off when i saw pre-market i was like lord look at that rise i don't know what you guys thought and then when you saw the sell i was like oh okay i got you i got you just let me know what you think down in the comments how this is going to go if it's going to be a sell the news event or is it just going to defy gravity and keep going up to 500 real quick all right so anyway guys hope you got something out of it i really appreciate you guys watching the video and sharing and stuff please hit that like and subscribe button and again appreciate all your support and i will see you tomorrow